Hello everyone. In this simple tutorial, we will learn how to create a very simple layout on your website. So, this tutorial today is inspired by Uganda's independence. So, today it's Uganda's independence. I decided to create some simple layout towards today's celebration. As you can see, we just have the Ugandan flag on the right hand, on the left hand side, sorry, and also some content or text on the right hand side. So the first two paragraphs are real and the last one it's fake so I used some rolling ipsum text but the effect that we want to get or explains on this page is this text wrapping around this image or following the flow of the circle and the two CSS properties that you're going to learn first is going to be the clip path property so this image actually it was a re rectangle as you can see there a square or a rectangle like that but using the clip path property we managed to create this circle then the last property it's going to be the one responsible for creating this flow of text and the property is called the shape outside property so those are the two css properties that you're going to be learning in this tutorial so in case you're interested then Feel free to finish the entire video and learn something new in case you're a beginner. So I'm going to save my content here and we lose everything on the page. All that cool design that you saw. And this is the normal layout of the page. So we just have this flag, a rectangle, then our text here. And that's the way, like it's the way that we structured the the layout or the content then let us check our markup so what i have i have a simple div with a class of info then actually we are not even going to do a lot of stuff here but i just have some simple div in case i needed to add some more extra styles to this content inside but i have the parent div that is housing the image and the content it's called info so this div with a class of info and the rest is fake text and some real data that i got from wikipedia so i have no time to write all this then i have two files here we have index.html and main.css so those are the two files that we are going to be working with index is where you put the markup and the style the main.css file is where we are going to write our CSS. So this is the image, it's just a flag of Uganda that I got from the internet. So that's the simple markup. We just have the image and the content. So my main.css, I already have some specific styles for the responsible for the layout of this page. So all what this is doing it's centering the content in the middle so you may not see it but somehow this content is placed in the middle of the page open this so it's somehow in the middle of the page then container so this container is just responsible for leaving some eco width this side and this side so when you see margin zero auto they will leave some equal width on the right hand side and left hand side and this maximum width of the browser that we specify then let us go straight into the design remember i said we have this div so it's the parent container to all this content that you're seeing inside here so it's the parent container so use some css specificity then we have say info so that's the parent container then the image so that is inside that div with a class of info then what we want to do is we are going to float it to the left so float which we could see this side by side somewhere here so we are going to float it to the left So this is what you're seeing right now. So we have floated this image on the left hand side. 
And right now we see this simple layout so we have floated this image on this side our text being floated the right hand side so what we are going to do we are going to add some simple margin so margin on the right margin right so i'm going to use the frame values so this I should put like two theorem margin right then i'm going to leave also some margin on the bottom the margin bottom i'm going to put like theorem and this is what we are having so we have the margin rate which is this and also some margin bottom now it's time you learn about the clip mask so what this does so let me first write the css property clip path not clip mask sorry clip path and then i'm going to use the circle value so writing only this we are going to be having this circle so right now we have this as the outcome so but you can go ahead and play around with some values maybe you don't want it here you want to cover some bit of this side let's say it's some content then you feel you are, you are free to pass in some values here inside it's like a function then let me first show you 50 50 and i show you how it look like 50 percent 50 percent so the first value controls the size of this shape and this one these two values that you're seeing they will control the position of the region that you want to display in the browser so let me save this 50 50 and this is what you're seeing so i'm going to right click on this image inspect so it's always important to use this dev tool let me bring this up so right now we are seeing our property clip path here i've not yet explained it but i'm going to explain it how it works so as i said the first value the 50 percent that you're seeing here it controls the size of the shape so on your keyboard you can use the arrow keys so the up and lower arrow key so as you can see as i'm placing the lower arrow key that points down and they are shrinking this so the more i reduce on the value is the more the size of this shape is going to reduce so if i place the upper arrow key let me pull this down a little bit so it's the way it's the size that is going to be displayed in the browser so i'm going to put it at around 35 so here we can come in our html sorry css and we put 35 percent so that is a complete circle so that's what we are having right now so for the as i told you these two values the 50 percent 50 percent they are responsible for the positioning or the area that is shown in the shape so if you alter the first value of 50 as you can see it covers it goes on on the left hand side covering that part so in case i want to cover that part then i will play with this first value going on the right hand side so this value that you're seeing will go on towards the right hand side so if you place it at 50 then you will be right in the middle of the image or shape that you'll be creating then the last one as you've guessed then for it it will control the upper and lower shape of the page so or sorry not of the page of the shape if i put at 50 then it will be right in the middle so get it right now so the first value controls the size of the shape then the last two values they will control the positioning or the part that you want to display 
on that shape. So what this clip path does, it creates a clipping region that sets what part of an element should be shown. So you should know that that's how the clip path works. Then the last thing that we're going to be handling, it's what brought us here, the shape. Sorry. Yep. Outside property. And this one we are just going to pass in circle. And automatically on the text will follow or yeah, follow the flow of this shape. So right now, as you're seeing, our text is somehow wrapping around this. Then if you're not happy with these margins then you can go and reduce so it will just control these areas so the angles where the text and the shape will be meeting so that's where these margins will be working but the most important parts that we were supposed to be getting is this kind of feel so the text wrapping around the shape so these are the two simple css properties that you can add on your page to come up with such effects it's you will always find these types of effects in newspapers magazines where the content or text flows with the image and then let us see now the weird part if somebody visits your page on a small device so your layout is probably going to break like that and you don't want your users to experience such stuff. So we are just going to add some simple media queries. See how we can come out of that saga. Then let us right click inspect. So at the top right hand corner, so you're going to see some values or the width of the screen where we are. So let us go back to the normal size. And then reduce on the size until we see where our layout breaks completely or into a mess. Reduce. Looks fine. Looks fine. Looks fine. Then around here. So it is 600, 684. So we shall write our media query here at at media at media screen and max width max width sorry and then we want six hundred eighty four pixels so when users reach this size or the maximum width of the screen then and below then we are going to get that image so info image we are going to remove the float so remember we floated it on the left so float and we are going to set it to none this is how it's going to be looking like and still we don't want our we don't want our image now to also stay like this so we can also get the lip path and we set it to none and our image will go back in the original flow that we got it so it will be in a column format so if you go back to this side it will be fine then if we reach that area where our layout breaks completely then we go back to the original flow of the page so guys i hope this tutorial was somehow all useful to you and if so please subscribe to the channel like the page like the page like the video and i'll always see you in the next tutorial but still you can go and follow me on instagram all my links are now on the screen there and yeah guys subscribe to the channel don't forget that if this tutorial was useful to you. Peace.